Hey guys. Hey guys. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, it is TZ and I am back with another update. Oh my gosh, okay. This is take two um, of me standing here in my kitchen like I used to. Um, and uh, just in front of the camera, I literally had to wipe the dust off of my camera because it has been so long since I have stood here and did a video. And I didn't have enough storage, so I had to restart. And just looking at the old videos that I, um, that record it, it just kind of brought up like so much stuff. So I'm gonna get through this. I'm gonna muscle through this. I'm going to muscle up through this. All right, so for those who do not know me, my name is Infertility Z and I uh, started this channel back in 2017 just to spread awareness and educate women um, about infertility and journey of going through um, trying to conceive so at for the last what's well, been seven six seven years six years um, on this channel I have posted as far as like you know um, my um, my IVF journey that I've gone through um, so if you are new to my channel welcome um, if you're um, one of my TTC sisters or just follow my journey um, hi i'm here after so long um and yes yeah, so i just wanted to give you guys an update my goal is definitely to start posting back on my channel um i know that i took a break and then just with some health issues um that i was having or that i have i just stopped and yeah so i stopped posting um and stuff like that so I will incorporate that back into my channel as far as like again what I'm going through because you never know who who's gonna watch your video who's going to stumble across it and who you may help so um, this video isn't about that to talk about like my um, health the things that I've been going through with my with my health but to talk about my foster -versary. So, um, I think in one of my older videos, I posted that we were going through um, the foster, uh, we were going to foster. So, I believe I talked about that. If not, then um, I'm a foster parent now. And we started back in 2021, actually. So, we um, did our application and our certification back in 2021. And it took a full year for us to get certified. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put on my timer because this is not gonna go um, over 15 minutes. So I'm gonna try and make this a 15 minute video and then, so 15 minutes, it is counting down now. Okay, so back in 2021 we decided to become foster parents so you have to go through a certification so we did our certification and our application and for some reason it took a full year for us to get like fully certified and what hung up was our like i'm not sure if it was like the background checks or something after that um we didn't get cleared it right away. It took a full year, and the caseworker didn't know why. She said it usually doesn't. It doesn't take that long, but she wasn't sure because of COVID or whatever. As far as like why it took a full year, so we had did our like our certification application, but then when it came to like the background check and everything, it took a it took a full year for them to come back. So we didn't officially become certified until June of 2022. So last year. Um, she came to our house, did the final like walkthrough, uh, make sure everything was good because they had did it a year before and they had to do it again just to make sure that our, our house was safe and everything. So June of 2022 is when we finally got certified to become foster parents. 
um, and they told us that they would call us immediately if they had a placement, which they did. Um, so our goal was to foster between zero and five. That was the goal that we put on our application, and that's what when they asked, that's what we we asked for um, to have to foster uh, children between the age of zero and five. So they start calling. I want to say that the day after she had left and when she had cleared us, they start calling us. So um, yeah, so I had specifically asked that they call me and not my spouse um, when there was a placement just because I did want to ask questions. I wanted to make sure that they were a good fit and um, my spouse is more so like a come one, come all, like, oh yeah, sure. And I'm like, wait, hold on, I have, I have questions. So they called me several times uh, about placements and I didn't feel like it was a good fit. And it's okay to say no when they call and I think that it is good because you don't want that child to come in your house and then it, it not work and then the child be placed somewhere else because that uh, that's not healthy for the child because they're already in a stressful situation like being taken away from their home and then being placed from foster home to foster home. So to avoid that, you, you do want to ask questions and make sure that they are a good fit. Um, we have or we had a dog my doggy died I had her for 16 years and she passed away recently but at that time we had a dog and um, so when I would ask questions there were some children that abused you know animals killed animals um, and things like that so I would have to say I'm sorry but I have a dog and that's not I don't feel comfortable with that child being you know in our house with that with those type of like backgrounds and stuff like that so as if you do become a foster parent um, those are things that you want to ask as far as like you know just get have ask for like backgrounds uh, about the child so then we figured we would do respite um, at first just kind of get our our feet wet because it had been a full year like I, I want to say like after we had finished like all of our um, court our classes and stuff like that like we were ready to go and it took like a full year so we were kind of just in our thing so then once a year later once we got certified it was like okay well maybe we should try respite and respite is when um the the foster child will come to your house maybe it's like on a weekend or like a couple of days or maybe a couple of um, i'm not gonna say a couple of hours but maybe like a couple of days they'll come to your house so it's, it's very temporary you may be given another foster family a break they may have to go out, out of you know on vacation or just giving them a break uh, that child would come to your house for like the weekend. So we figured that we would give that a shot to do like respite over the summer. And then once fall came, then we would jump into it. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. We did get more calls. We got calls about teenagers and then just other other calls. And again, just wanted to make sure that it was a, a good fit for our household. Because again, you want to protect everyone in the house. Um, so it didn't work out. So finally, we got a call in late August about a placement, and in this situation, uh, they and, and they did say like in certain situations, you are able to like meet the child before the child is placed. Sometimes it's an emergency, and they'll call you and say, "Hey, we have a placement. Can we can we drop them off like today?" Um, there are other situations where they'll say, "Well, you know, they may be in a home now, but they're you know they need to be transitioned to a, a long term home." Can you meet the meet the child um, and then go from there? So uh, there was a placement and um, I'll call her Miss Arnaz to protect her identity. So Miss Arnaz, um, in, she needed a, a long she needed a long term placement and so the caseworker called and asked if we could like you know meet her. Like she was a very sweet young lady. She's a teenager and asked if we would you know be willing to meet her and to see if she's a good placement for our house. So we said sure. We we need to do it right because it was already um, June passed, July passed, and August, and I'm kind of like saying no. And I'm like okay, we need to just jump in and we need to do this. So uh, said yes and. So she came to our house and we, the case, one, I guess, I'm not sure if it was her caseworker, but a caseworker brought her to our house and she sat with us, the caseworker sat with us for maybe like 10, 15 minutes and then she just, she, she dropped her off and then um, it was our responsibility to take her back to um, where she was residing at the time. So she spent like maybe three hours with us. Um, we talked, asked her questions, she asked us questions uh, and we figured we would have like dinner with her so we asked her what she wanted to eat and she wanted to have she wanted fries and um 
fries and chicken fingers so I went to the store and then as far as dessert uh, she had I don't think she had ever had apple pie and ice cream before so we figured that we would do that also so I uh, went to the store went to the grocery store picked all that up and then we cooked it and then um, we ate we had dinner with her and I believe at one point I had to walk my dog so she asked if she could go with me to walk my dog so she went out with me to walk my dog and uh, she had and then she watched a movie um, and then after that I dropped her off to her to um, the foster uh, family that she was staying with at that time so we talked about it and we felt like she was a good fit and I know we had talked about zero to five but since she was a little bit older she has special needs but since she's older she's a teenager we figured like you know what maybe we can do an older you know an older child and not a small child basically basically also with like our um our work schedules and stuff like that and like I said at that that last year we or the year before we were like ready to take on you know a smaller child but just with traveling and just doing whatever we're like okay well maybe a, an older placement would would fit better so um i'm just watching the time because i don't want to go over so we figured that that would work so we said yes um we were like let's let's do it we have the room we were ready we you know we discussed it as a family and um we said let's do it so made arrangements to pick her up and then on labor day of last year uh i went to go pick her up from uh, where she was staying and we brought her back so it has been a full year that miss arnez has been in our house um and we just kind of it just went from there um so we uh let's see picked her up on labor day and then she started school actually the next the next day she started school as a freshman so um it was just like immediately like let's go we got to do this so had to get some adjustments done as far as transportation as far as the, like, the school bus from our house to her house and things like that but um, her school district was really accommodating and worked with us to get things situated and um, yeah I can't say that it's been um, easy the last year it has been um, it has been a journey it has been a, a, a journey and it's definitely definitely been rewarding um, I yeah like I don't know what to say it, I don't know what to say um, I'm surprised that it's been this long I know they said long-term placement but just wasn't sure what long-term meant I could thought like I wasn't expecting a year for her to be with us but it's been a year and um, yeah so that is where we are um, with all of this and just being a foster mom it has been um, I don't know a learning experience for me to to take on the role of um, you know making decisions for another child and being that decision maker and she is definitely a teenager um, and has teenager ways <laughs> even though she is special needs and she's uh, developmentally delayed um, that's where it's like you know sometimes you 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 want to um, you, because of her age you would think that she's a teenager but then when you're talking to her she is not so it's it's you have to kind of pick and choose of when you know like when she's in this teenager role I want to say or she's acting like a teenager but then she's also acting or performing like a seven or eight year old so um, that has been um, I guess a learning experience there as felt as as far as um, like just learning and being around someone with special needs um, as far as her level of like ac activities of like daily living I guess you could say I would say she needs supervision she needs constant supervision and some limited assistance so she's not able to cook on her own um, she does not touch the um, the stove but she does know how to use like the microwave and the toaster uh, we graduated over the summer to her using the air fryer, but with supervision, she can't do it on her own. 
Um, so she's, she's becoming a little bit more independent. Also with getting on the bus in the morning, she is absolutely independent with that. Started off with me getting her on the bus every morning. Now she gets on the bus on her own and she's been doing that since, um, since last year. I think it took like a month or so to kind of adjust, get her adjusted to getting up in the morning, you know, making breakfast and then getting herself on the bus without me being there. And now <laughs> this year her bus actually comes at 6.30 in the morning, which is about two hours before she starts school. So um last year was like at 8 15 so there's a there's an adjustment as far as her getting up early and she loves school she does she is not gonna miss school so she is up and she is ready um every day to go to school she has not missed a day of school she didn't miss a day of school last year and this year same thing even though her bus schedule is earlier she has not she loves school so she's not gonna miss that bus to go to school so that's great um I should have took, taken notes before I started this video, but I didn't, so I'm just kind of going through um, and also being cautious of what I can and cannot say to again to protect her. Um, so it may roll over into another video, and I, it looks like I'm on the two minute mark on my phone, even though I started a little bit late. So um, with the uh, the timer on my phone but yeah so I just wanted to give you guys an update to let you know that we just had our one-year foster anniversary with our foster daughter and um yeah it, like I said it, it's been a journey I can't say that it's been easy it hasn't it's it's been uh it's definitely been a journey with ups and downs um for I think all of us, but we've definitely have gone gotten through it. Um, right now, we are at a crossroad where, since she's been in foster care for a year, we were asked if um, adoption was on the table. So um, that was brought up recently. Um, that was a discussion that was had recently, and um, yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Um, I will talk about more stuff in other videos. Again, I just wanted to get on really quick because I had time. Um, house is empty. Usually this kitchen is open like 7-Eleven. So if everybody was in the house, then I wouldn't be standing here uh, being able to record in peace. So I just had a few minutes to kind of record. So I figured I would just uh, record really quick to say that I reached my one year foster anniversary with our foster child and um, yeah so I will start posting more I'm not gonna say I will post every day I'm not gonna say I will post every week but I will start posting more because I do want to keep this conversation going as far as like um, the things that has come up within the last year with being a foster parent and um, you know just starting this journey so uh, again I didn't capture it in the beginning so I apologize for that because everything else I feel like I've done in the moment but now I'm not it's like a, a delay so I'm trying to rack my brain and remember what you know what happened a year ago or two years ago um, so I will be more diligent as far as like capturing it in the moment and talking about it if you guys have any questions about fostering uh, please let me know like I said I'll start kind of um, mapping some things out as far as like some topics that I want to talk about with fostering because this is our first time this is a, f a first time placement for us so we learned a lot there's a lot of stuff that you're not going to up oh, and here's my timer um, so yeah there's a lot of things that they talk about in the you know in the sessions but when you're in it and you're in the moment it's like how do you react to this what do you do like they give you scenarios to go by but when you're in it when you're in that real deal in that moment like it's like what do you do how do you address this so um so yeah if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to me on youtube i do not use my um instagram anymore um i may create a new instagram page i'm not sure i might not i don't know we'll see but i'll post more on youtube but happy foster anniversary to me i survived my first year of being a foster mom and that's it so i guess i will talk to you guys later bye